Act One of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Prologue, written by Philip Froudy, Esquire. As in some region where indulgent skies enrich the soil, a thousand plants arise, frequent and bold, a thousand landscapes meet, our ravished view irregularly sweet. We gaze divided now on these, now those, while all one beauteous wilderness compose. Such Shakespeare's genius was. Let Brighton's boast the glorious birth, and eager strive who most shall celebrate his verse. For while we raise trophies of fame to him, ourselves we praise. Display the talents of a British mind, where all is great, free, open, unconfined. Be it our pride to reach his daring flight, and relish beauties he alone could write most modern authors fearful to aspire with imitation cramp their genial fire the well-schemed plan kept strict before their eyes dwell on proportions trifling decencies while noble nature all neglected lies nature that claims precedency of place perfection's basis and essential grace nature so intimately shakespeare knew from her first springs his sentiments he drew most greatly wild they flow and when most wild yet true while these secure in what the critics teach of servile laws still dread the dangerous breach his vast unbounded soul disdained their rule upon the precepts of the pedant school oh could the bard revisiting our light receive these honours done his shade to-night how would he bless the scene this age displays transcending his eliza's golden days when great augustus fills the british throne and his loved consort makes the muse her own how would he joy to see fair merit's claim thus answered in his own reviving fame how cry with pride oblivion i forgive this my last child to latest times shall live lost to the world well for the birth it stayed to this auspicious era well delayed dramatis personae duke angelo read by david olson roderick his elder son read by rob board henricus his younger son Read by Christine G. Don Bernard, father to Leonora. Read by Todd. Camillo, father to Giulio. Read by Elizabeth Clatt. Giulio, in love with Leonora. Read by Alex Lane. Citizen, read by Clara Bryan. Master of the Flocks. Read by David Olson. First Shepherd. Read by Todd. Second Shepherd. Read by Elizabeth Clatt. Leonora. Read by Sarah Terry. Violante. Read by Libby Stevenson. Maid. Read by Mary Schneider. Gentlemen. Read by Clara Bryan. Fabian. Read by Phil Winkleman. Lopez. Read by Rob Board. Servant. Read by Mary Schneider. Narrated by Abai. Scene. The Province of Andalusia in Spain. Act One, Scene One. Scene: A Royal Palace. Duke Angelo, Roderick, and Courtiers. My gracious father, this unwanted strain visits my heart with sadness. Why, my son, making my death familiar to my tongue, digs not my grave one jot before the date. I've worn the garland of my honours long, and would not leave it withered to thy brow, but flourishing and green, worthy the man, who with my dukedoms airs my better glories. This praise, which is my pride, spreads me with blushes. Think not that I can flatter thee, my Roderick, or let the scale of love 
overpoise my judgment like a fair glass of retrospection thou reflectest the virtues of my early youth making my old blood mend its pace with transport while fond henriquez thy irregular brother sets the large credit of his name at stake a truant to my wishes and his birth his taints of wildness hurt our nicer honour and call for swift reclaim i trust my brother will by the vantage of his cooler wisdom erewhile redeem the hot escapes of youth and court opinion with a golden conduct be thou a prophet in that kind suggestion but i by fears weighing his unweighed course interpret for the future from the past and strange misgivings why he hath of late by importunity the strained petition rested our leave of absence from the court awake suspicion thou art inward with him and haply from the bosom trust canst shape some formal cause to qualify my doubts why he hath pressed this absence sir i know not but have his letters of a modern date wherein by julio good camillo's son who as he says shall follow hard upon and whom i with the growing hour expect he doth solicit the return of gold to purchase certain horse that like him well this julio he encountered first in france and lovingly commends him to my favour wishing i would detain him some few days to know the value of his well-placed trust oh do it roderick and essay to mould him an honest spy upon thy brother's riots make us acquainted when the youth arrives we'll see this julio and he shall from us receive the secret loan his friend requires bring him to court exeunt scene two prospect of a village at a distance enters camillo with a letter how comes the duke to take such notice of my son that he must needs have him in court and i must send him upon the view of his letter horsemanship what horsemanship has julio i think he can no more but gallop a hackney unless he practised riding in france it may be he did so for he was there a good continuance but i have not heard him speak much of his horsemanship that's no matter if he be not a good horseman all's one in such a case he must bear princes are absolute they may do what they will in anything save what they cannot do enters julio oh come on sir read this paper no more ado but read it it must not be answered by my hand nor yours but in gross by your person your sole person read aloud please you to let me first o'erlook it sir i was this other day in a spleen against your new suits i do now think some fate was the tailor that hath fitted them for this hour they are for the palace of the duke your father's house is too dusty hem decor aside which is the better to serve a mistress or a duke i am sued to be his slave and i sue to be leonora's you shall find your horsemanship much praised there are you so good a horseman i have been ere now commended for my seat or mocked take one commendation with another every third's a mock affect not therefore to be praised here's a good deal of command and entreaty mixed there's no denying you must go peremptorily he enforces that aside what fortune soever my going shall encounter cannot be good fortune what i part with all in seasons any other goodness you must needs go he rather conjures than importunes aside no moving of my love suit to him now great fortunes have grown out of less grounds aside what may her father think of me who expects to be solicited this very night those scattered pieces of virtue which are in him the court will solder together varnish and rectify aside he will surely think i deal too slightly or unmannerly or foolishly indeed nay dishonestly to bear him in hand with my father's consent who hath yet not been touched with so much as a request to it well sir have you read it over yes sir and considered it as i can if you are counted by good fortune you must go so it please you sir by any means and to-morrow is it not there the limit of his request it is sir 
I must bethink me of some necessaries, without which you might be unfurnished, and my supplies shall at all convenience follow you. Come to my closet by and by. I would there speak with you. Exit Camillo. Manet Julio Solus. I do not see that fervor in the maid, which youth and love should kindle. She consents, as t'were to feed without an appetite, tells me she is content, and plays the coy one like those that suddenly make their words their ward, keeping a dress at distance. This affection is such a feigned one, and will break untouched, die frosty ere it can be thawed, while mine, like a climb beneath Hyperion's eye, burns with one constant heat. I'll straight go to her, pray her to regard my honor, but she greets me. Enter Leonora and maid. See how her beauty doth enrich the place. Oh, add the music of thy charming tongue, sweet as the lark that wakens in the morn, and make me think it paradise indeed. I was about to seek thee, Leonora, and chide thy coldness, love. What says your father? I have not moved him yet. Then do not, Julio. Not move him? Was it not your own command that his consent should ratify our loves? Perhaps it was. But now I've changed my mind. You purchase at too dear a rate that puts you to woo me and your father too. Besides, as he perchance may say you shall not have me, you who are so obedient must discharge me out of your fancy. Then you know twill prove my shame and sorrow meeting such repulse to wear the willow in my prime of youth. Oh, do not rack me with these ill-placed doubts, nor think, though age has in my father's breast put out love's flame, he therefore has not eyes or is in judgment blind. You wrong your beauties. Venus will frown if you despise her gifts that have a face that would make a frozen hermit leap from his cell and burn his beads to kiss it. Eyes that are nothing but continual bursts of new desires in those that view their beams. You cannot have a cause to doubt. Why, Julio? When you that dare not choose without your father, and where you love, you dare not vouch it, must not, though you have eyes, see with them. Can I think you somewhat, perhaps, infected with your suit, sit down content to say, you would, but dare not? Urge not suspicions of what cannot be. You deal unkindly, misbecomingly, I'm loth to say. For all that waits on you is graced and graces. No impediment shall bar my wishes, but such grave delays, as reason presses patience with, which blunt not, but rather wet our loves. Be patient, sweet. Patient? What else? My flames are in the flint. Haply to lose a husband I may weep, never to get one. When I cry for bondage, let freedom quit me. From what spirit comes this? I now perceive too plain you care not for me. Duke, I obey thy summon, be its tenor, Whatever it will, if war, I come thy soldier, or if to waste my silken hours at court, the slave of fashion, I with willing soul embrace the lazy banishment for life, since Leonora has pronounced my doom. What do you mean? Why talk you of the duke? Wherefore of war, or court, or banishment? How this new note is grown of me, I know not, but the duke writes for me. Coming to move my father in our business, I did find him reading this letter, whose contents require my instant service and repair to court. Now I perceive the birth of these delays. Why, Leonora was not worth your suit. Repair to court? Ay, there you shall, perhaps, rather pass doubt. Behold some choice of beauty, rich in her charms, trained to the arts of soothing, shall prompt you to a spirit of hardiness. To say so please you, father, I have chosen this mistress for my own. Still you mistake me, ever your servant I profess myself, and will not blot me with a change for all that sea and land inherit. But when go you? Tomorrow, love, so runs the duke command, stinting our farewell kisses, cutting off the forms of parting, and the interchange of thousand precious vows with haste too rude. Lovers have things of moment to debate more than a prince or dreaming statesman know. Such ceremonies can wait on Cupid's throne. Why heap that sigh? Oh, Julio! Let me whisper what but for parting I should blush to tell thee. My heart beats thick with fears, lest the gay scene, the splendours of a court, should from thy breast banish my image, kill my interest in thee, and I be left the scoff of maids to drop a widow's tear for thy departed faith. O oh, let assurance strong as words can bind, tell thy plead soul I would be wondrous faithful, 
true as the sun to his race of light, and shade to darkness as desire to beauty. And when I swerve, let wretchedness o'ertake me, great as e'er falsehood met, or change can merit. Enough. I am satisfied, and will remain yours with a firm and untired constancy. Make not your absence long. Old men are wavering and swayed by interest more than promise given. Should some fresh offer start when you're away, I may be pressed to something which must put my faith or my obedience to the rack. Fear not, but I with swiftest wings of time will labor my return, and in my absence my noble friend, who now our honored guest, the Lord Enriquez, will in my behalf hang at your father's ear, and with kind hints poured from a friendly tongue secured my claim, and play the lover for thy absent Julio. Is there no instance of a friend turned false? Take heed of that. No love by proxy, Julio. My father enters Don Bernard. What, Julio? In public? This wooing is too urgent. Is your father yet moved in the suit, who must be the prime unfolder of this business? I have not yet indeed at full possessed my father, whom it is my service follows, but only that I have a wife and chase. Chase? Let chase alone, no matter for that. You may halt after her, whom you profess to pursue, and catch her too. Mary, not unless your father let you slip. Briefly, I desire you, for she tells me my instructions shall be both eyes and feet to her, no further to insist in your requiring, till, as I have formerly said, Camillo make known to me that his good liking goes along with us, which, but once breathed, all is done, till when the business has no life and cannot find a beginning. Sir, I will know his mind ere I taste sleep. At morn you shall be learned his desire. I take my leave, O oh, virtuous Leonora, repose, sweet as thy beauties, seal thy eyes. Once more, adieu. I have thy promise, love. Remember, and be faithful. Exit, Julio. His father is as unsettled as he is wayward in his disposition. If I thought young Julio's temper were not mended by the metal of his mother, I should be something crazy in giving my consent to this match. And, to tell you the truth, if my eyes might be the directors to your mind, I could in this town look upon twenty men of more delicate choice. I speak not this altogether to unbend your affections to him, but the meaning of what I say is that you set such price upon yourself to him as many and much his betters would buy you at, and reckon those virtues in you at the rate of their scarcity, to which, if he not come up, you remain for a better mart. My obedience, sir, is chained to your advice. Tis well said, and wisely. I fear your lover is a little folly tainted, which, shortly after it proves so, you will repent. Sir, I confess, I approve him of all the men I know. But that approbation is nothing till seasoned by your consent. We shall hear soon what his father will do, and so proceed accordingly. I have no great heart to the business, neither will I with any violence oppose it. But leave it to that power which rules in these conjunctions, and there's an end. Come, haste we homeward, girl. Exeunt. Scene 3. Enter Henriquez and servants with lights. Bear the lights close. Barista music, sirs. Coming, my lord. Let him not come too near. This maid, from whom my sights ride on a night's chill of vapour, is born most humbly, though she be as fair, as nature's richest mould and skill can make her. Mended with strong imagination. But what of that? The obscureness of her birth cannot eclipse the lustre of her eyes, which makes her all one light. Strike up, my masters. But touch the strings with a religious softness, teach sound to languish through the night's dull air, till melancholy start from her lazy couch, and carelessness grow convert to attention. Music plays. She drives me into wonder, and I sometimes hear her discourse, the court whereof report, and guess alone inform her she will rave at, as if she their seven reigns had slandered time, 
then when she reasons on her country state health virtue plenness and simplicity on beauty's true entitled scorning art freedom as well to do as think what's good my heart grows sick of birth and empty rank and i become a villager in wish play on she sleeps too sound be still and vanish a gleam of day breaks sudden from her window oh taper graced by that midnight hand violante appears above at her window who is it that woos at this late hour what are you one who for your dear sake watches the starless night my lord henriquez or my ear deceives me you've had my answer and tis more than strange you'll combat these repulses good my lord be friend to your own health and give me leave securing my poor fame nothing to pity what pangs you swear you suffer tis impossible to plant your choice affections in my shade at least for them to grow there why violante alas sir the reasons are numberless to bar your aims be warned to hours more wholesome for these you watch in vain i have read stories i fear two true ones how young lords like you have thus besung mean windows rhymed their sufferings even to the abuse of things divine set up plain girls like me the idols of their worship then left them to bewail their easy faith and stand the world's contempt your memory too faithful to the wrongs of a few lost mates makes fair too general let us be homely and let us too be chaste doing you lords no wrong but crediting your oaths with such spirit as you profess them so no party trusted shall make a losing bargain home my lord what you can say is most unreasonable what sing most abstinent and harsh nay your perfume which i smell hither cheers not my sense like our field violet's breath why this dismission does more invite my staying men of your temper make everything their bramble but i would wrong that which i am preserving my maid's name to hold so long discourse your virtues guide you to effect some nobler purpose exit violante stay bright maid come back and leave me with a fairer hope she's gone who am i that am thus condemned the second son to a prince yes well what then why your great birth forbids you to descend to a low alliance hers is the self-same stuff whereof we dukes are made but clay more pure and take away my title which is acquired not by myself but thrown by fortune on me or by the merit of some ancestor of singular quality she doth inherit the sets outweigh me i must stoop to gain her throw all my gay comparisons aside and turn my proud additions out of service rather than keep them to become my masters the dignities we wear are gifts of pride and laughed at by the wise as of a mere outside Exit. End of first act. Act two of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One. Scene: The Prospect of a Village. Enter Fabian and Lopez. Henriquez on the opposite side. Soft, soft, you neighbour, who comes here? Pray you, slink aside. Ha! Has it come to this? Oh, the devil, the devil, the devil! Lo, you now, for want of the discreet ladle of a cool understanding, will this fellow's brains boil over? To have enjoyed her would have given what all that at present I could boast my own, and the reversion of the world to boot, had the inheritance been mine, and now, just doom of guilty joys, I grieve as much that I have rifled all the stores of beauty, those charms of innocence and artless love, as just before I was devoured with sorrow, that she refused my vows and shut the door upon my ardent longings love love downright love 
i see by the foolishness of it now then to recollections was not so a promise first of marriage not a promise only for twas bound with surely a thousand oats and those not light ones neither yet i remember too those oats could not prevail though unpractised made tremble to meet my love by force alone i snatched the imperfect joy which now torments my memory not love but brutal violence prevailed to which the time and place and opportunity were accessories most dishonourable shame shame upon it what a heap of stuff's this i fancy this fellow's head would make a good peddler's pack neighbour hold let me be severe to myself but not unjust was it a rape then no her shrieks her exclamations then had drove me from her true she did not consent as true she did resist but still in silence all twas but the coyness of a modest bride not the resentment of a ravish maid and is the man yet born who could not risk the guilt to meet the joy the guilt that's true but then the danger the tears the glamours of the ruined maid pursuing me to court that that i farewell as it already does my conscience something shatter my honour what's to be done but now i have no choice fair leonora reigns confessed the tyrant queen of my revolted heart and violante seems a short usurper there julio's already by my arts removed o oh, friendship how wilt thou answer that oh that a man could reason down this fever of the blood or soothe with words the tumult in his heart then julio i might be indeed thy friend they they only should condemn me who born devoid of passion never approved the fierce dispute twixt virtue and desire while they who have like me the loose escapades of youthful nature known must wink at mine indulgent to their own exit henriquez this man is certainly mad and may be mischievous prithee neighbour let's follow him but at some distance for fear of the worst exeunt after henriquez scene two an apartment enters violante alone whom shall i look upon without a blush there is not a maid whose eye with virgin grace pierces not to my guilt what will it avail me to say i was not willing nothing but that i publish my dishonour and wound my fame anew oh misery to seem to all one's neighbours rich yet no one's self necessitous and wretched enter maid and afterwards gerald with a letter madam here's gerald lord enrique's servant he brings a letter to you a letter to me how i tremble now your lord's for court good gerald is he not not so lady oh my presaging heart when goes he then his business now steers him some other course whither i pray you how my fears torment me some two months progress whither whither sir i do beseech you good heaven i lose all patience did he deliberate this or was the business but then conceived when it was born lady i know not that nor is it in the command i have to wait your answer for the perusing the letter i commend you to your leisure exit gerald to hearts like mine suspense is misery wax render up thy trust be thy contents prosperous or fatal they are all my due reads our prudence should now teach us to forget what our indiscretion has committed i have already made one step towards this wisdom by prevailing myself to bid you farewell oh wretched and betrayed lost violante heart wounded with a thousand perjured vows poisoned with studied language and bequeathed to desperation i am now become the tomb of my own honour a dark mansion for death alone to dwell in i invite thee consuming desolation to this temple now fit to be thy spoil the ruined fabric which cannot be repaired at once or thrown what must i do but that's not worth my thought 
I will commend to hazard all the time I shall spend hereafter. Farewell, my father, whom I'll no more offend, and men adieu whom I'll no more believe, and maids adieu whom I'll no longer shame. The way I go as yet I know not. Sorrow be my guide. Exit Violante. Scene three. Prospect of a village before Don Bernard's house. Enters Henriquez. Where were the eyes, the voice, the various charms? Each beauty's particle, each nameless grace. Parents of glowing love? All these in her, it seems, were not. But a disease in me, that fancied graces in her, who never beheld, more than a hawthorn shall have cause to say, the cedar's a tall tree, and scorn the shade, the loved bush once had lent him. Soft, my nonna, begins to sicken in this black reflection. How can it be that with my honour safe I should pursue Leonora for my wife? that were accumulating injuries to violante first and now to julio to her a perjured wretch to him perfidious and to myself in strongest terms accused of murthering honour wilfully without which my dog's the creature of the nobler kind but pleasure is too strong for reason's curb and conscience sinks so o'erpowered with beauty sweet come leonora authoress of my crime appear and vindicate thy empire here Aid me to drive this lingering honour hence, and I am wholly thine. Enter to him Don Bernard and Leonora. Fie, my good lord! Why would you wait without? If you suspect your welcome, I have brought my Leonora to assure you of it. Henriquez salutes Leonora. O oh, kiss sweet as the odours of the spring, but cold as dews that dwell in morning flowers. Say, Leonora. Was your father conquered? Shall duty then last obtain the price which you refuse to love? And shall Henry guess, or all his happiness to good Bernardo? Ah, no, I read my ruin in your eyes. That sorrow, louder than a thousand tongues, pronounces my despair. Come, Leonora, you are not now to learn this noble lord, whom but to name restores my failing age, has with a lover's eye beheld your beauty through which his heart speaks more than language can it offers joy and happiness to you and honour to our house imagine then the birth and qualities of him that loves you which when you know you cannot rate too dear my father on my knees i do beseech you to pause one moment on your daughter's ruin i vow my heart even bleeds that i must thank you for your past tenderness and yet distrust that which is yet behind consider sir whoso as the occasion of another's fault cannot himself be innocent oh give not the censuring world occasion to reproach your harsh commands or to my charge lay that which most i fear the fault of disobedience prithee fear neither the one nor the other i tell thee girl there's more fear than danger for my own part as soon as thou art married to this noble lord my fears will be over sir i should be the vainest of my sex not to esteem myself unworthy far of this high honour once there was a time when to have heard my lord henrique's vows might have subdued my unexperienced heart and made me wholly his but that's now past and my firm plighted faith by your consent was long since given to the injured julio why then by my consent e'en take it back again thou like a simple wench hast given thy affections to a fellow that does not care a farthing for them one that has left thee for a jaunt to court as who should say i'll get a place now tis time enough to marry when i'm turned out of it so surely it should seem most lovely maid julio alas feels nothing of my passion his love is but the amusement of an hour a short relief from business or ambition the sport of youth and fashion of the age oh had he known the hopes the doubts the ardours of half the fond varieties of passion that played a tyrant with my tortured soul he had not left thee to pursue his fortune 
to practice cringes in a slavish circle, and barter real bliss for unsure honour. Oh, the opposing wind shouldering the tide makes here a fearful billow. I needs must perish in it. Oh, my lord, is it then possible you can forget what's due to your great name and princely birth, to friendship's holy law, to faith repose, to truth, to honour and poor injured Julio? Oh, think, my lord, how much this Julio loves you. Recall his services, his well-tried faith. Think to this very hour, where'er he be, your favour is the envy of the court, and secret triumph of his grateful heart. Poor Julio, how securely thou depend'st upon the faith and honour of thy master! Mistaken youth! This very hour he robs thee of all thy heart holds dear. Tis so Henriquez repays the merits of unhappy Julio. Aside. My slumbering honour catches the alarm. I was to blame to parley with her thus. She's shown me to myself. It troubles me. Mad, mad, stark mad by this light. I but begin to be so. I conjure you by all the tender interests of nature, by the chaste love twixt you and my dear mother. Oh, holy heaven that she were living now. Forgive and pity me. Oh, sir, remember I've heard my mother say a thousand times her father would have forced her virgin choice, but when the conflict was twixt love and duty, which should be first obeyed, my mother quickly paid up her vows to love and married you. You thought this well, and she was praised for this. For this her name was honoured, disobedience was ne'er imputed to her. Her firm love conquered whate'er opposed it, and she prospered long time your wife. My case is now the same. You are the father which you then condemned. I, what my mother was, but not so happy. Go to, you're a fool. No doubt you have old stories enough to undo you. What, you can't throw yourself away but by precedent, huh? You will needs be married to one that will none of you. You will be happy nobody's way but your own, forsooth. But, do you mark me, spare your tongue for the future, and that's using you hardly, too, to bid you spare what you have a great deal too much of. Go, go your ways, and do you hear, get ready within these two days to be married to a husband you don't deserve. Do it, or by my dead father's soul, you are no acquaintance of mine. She weeps. Be gentler to her, good Bernardo. Then woe the day! I am circled round with fire. No way for my escape but through the flames. Oh, can I e'er resolve to live without a father's blessing, or abandon Julio? With other maids the choice were not so hard. Interest that rules the world has made at last a merchandise of hearts, and virgins now choose as their bid and wed without esteem. By nobler springs shall my affections move, nor own a master but the man I love. Exit Leonora. Go thy ways, contradiction. Follow her, my lord, follow her in the very heat. This obstinacy must be combated by importunity as obstinate. Exit Henriquez after her. The girl says right. Her mother was just such another. I remember two of us courted her at the same time. She loved neither of us, but she chose me purely to spite that surly old blockhead, my father-in-law. Who comes here? Camillo? Now the refusing part will lie on my side. Enters Camillo. My worthy neighbor, I am much in fortune's favor to find you thus alone. I have a suit to you. Pleased to name it, sir. Sir, I have long held you in singular esteem, and what I shall now say will be a proof of it. You know, sir, I have but one son. I, sir. And the fortune I am blessed with, you pretty well know what it is. Tis a fair one, sir. Such as it is, the whole reversion is my son's. He is now engaged in his attendance on our master, the Duke. But ere he went, he left with me the secret of his heart, his love for your fair daughter. For your consent, he said, twas ready. I took a night, indeed, to think upon it, and now have brought you mine. 
and am come to bind the contract with half my fortune in present, the whole some time hence, and in the meanwhile my hearty blessing. Ha! Huh? What say you to it, Don Bernard? Why, really, neighbor? I must own I have heard something of this matter. Heard something of it? No doubt you have. Yes, now I recollect it well. Was it so long ago, then? Very long ago, neighbor. On Tuesday last. What, am I mocked in this business, Don Bernard? Not mocked, good Camillo, not mocked. But in love matters, you know, there are abundance of changes in half an hour. Time, time, neighbor, plays tricks with all of us. Time, sir? What tell you me of time? Come, I see how this goes. Can a little time take a man by the shoulder and shake off his honor? Let me tell you, neighbor, it must either be a strong wind or a very mellow honesty that drops so easily. Time, quotha? Look ye, Camillo, will you please to put your indignation in your pocket for half a moment while I tell you the whole truth of the matter? My daughter, you must know, is such a tender soul she cannot possibly see a duke's youngest son without falling desperately in love with him. Now, you know, neighbor, when greatness rides post after a man of my years, tis both prudence and good breeding to let oneself be overtaken by it. And who can help all this? I profess it was not my seeking, neighbor. I profess a fox might earth in the hollowness of your heart, neighbor, and there's an end. If I were to give a bad conscience its true likeness, it should be drawn after a very near neighbor to a certain poor neighbor of yours. Neighbor with a pox. Nay, you are so nimble with me, you will hear nothing. Sir, if I must speak nothing, I will hear nothing. As for what you have to say, if it comes from your heart, tis a lie before you speak it. All to Leonora, and if I find her in the same story, why, I shall believe your wife was true to you, and your daughter is your own. Fare you well. Exit as into Don Bernard's house. Ay, but two words must go into that bargain. It happens that I am at present of opinion my daughter shall receive no more company to-day, at least no such visits as yours. Exit Don Bernard, following him. Scene 4. Changes to another prospect of Don Bernard's house. Leonora, above. How tediously I've waited at the window, yet know not one that passes. Should I trust my letter to a stranger whom I think to bear and honest face, in which sometimes we fancy we are wondrous skilful? Then I might be much deceived. This late example of base Henriquez bleeding in me now from each good aspect takes away my trust, for his face seemed to promise truth and honour. Since nature's gifts in noblest forms deceive, be happy, you that want em. Here comes one. I've seen him, though I know him not. He has an honest face, too. That's no matter. Uh, sir! Enters citizen. To me? As you were of a virtuous matron born, there is no doubt you are. I do conjure you, grant me one boon. Say, do you know me, sir? Hey, Leonora, and your worthy father. I've not time to press the suit I've to you with many words. Nay, I should want the words, though I had leisure. But for love of justice, and as you pity misery. But I wander wide from my subject. Know you, Julio, sir? Yes, very well, and love him too as well. Ah, oh, there an angel spake. Then I conjure you, convey this paper to him, and believe me, you do heaven service in it, and shall have cause not to repent your pains. I know not what your fortune is. Pardon me, gentle sir, that I am bold to offer this. Throws down a purse with money. Don Bernard, within. Leonora! I trust to you. Heaven put it in your heart to work me some relief. Doubt it not, lady, you have moved me so, that though a thousand dangers pass by way, I'll dare them all to serve you. Exit, citizen. Thanks from a richer hand than mine require you. Why, daughter! I come. Oh, Julia, feel but half my grief, and thou wilt outfly time to bring relief. Exit Leonora from the window. 
End of Act 2. Act 3 of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act 3, Scene 1. Scene, The Prospect of a Village. Enter Julio with a letter and citizen. When from the world she did bow and call, her passions shook her voice, and from her eyes mistemper and destruction, with strange wildness, bespoke concern above a common sorrow. Poor Leonora, treacherous damned Enriquez, she bids me fill my memory with her danger. I do, my Leonora, yes, I fill the region of my thought with nothing else. Lower, she tells me here, that this affair shall yield a testimony of her love, and praise her letter may come safe and sudden. This prayer the heavens have heard, and I beseech him to hear all prayers she makes. Have patience, sir. Oh, my good friend, methinks I am too patient. Is there a treachery like this in baseness recorded anywhere? It is the deepest. None but itself can be its parallel, and from a friend professed friendship, why, tis a word forever maimed in human nature. It was a thing the noblest, and among beasts it stood not in mean place. Things of fierce nature hold amity and concordance. Such a villainy a writer could put not down in his scene, without taxation for his auditory, for fiction most enormous. These abatings cool time, while they are fented. I am counselled for you evermore, thanks. You've done much for us, so gently pressed to, that I may persuade me you'll do a little more. Put me the employment, that's honest, for not safe, with my best spirits, I'll give it accomplishment. No more but this. For I must see Leonora, and to appear like Julio as I am might haply spoil some good event ensuing. Let me crave the exchange of habit with you. Some disguise may bear me to my love, unmarked and secret. You shall not want it. Yonder's the house before us. Make haste to reach it. Still, I thank you, sir. O oh, Leonora, stand but this rude shock. Hold out thy faith against the dread assault of this base lord, and service of my life shall be devoted to repay thy constancy. Exeunt. Scene two, Don Bernard's house. Enters Leonora. I've hoped to the latest minute hope can give. He will not come. He has not received my letter. Maybe some other view has from our home repealed his changed eye. For what business can excuse a tardiness thus willful? None. Well, then it is not business. Oh, that letter i say is not delivered or oh, he's sick or oh, oh suggestion wherefore wilt thou fright me julio does to henriquez on mere purpose on plotted purpose yield me up and he hath chosen another mistress all presumptions make powerful to this point his own protraction henriquez left behind that strain lacked jealousy therefore lacked love so sure as life shall empty itself in death, this new surmise of mine is a bold certainty. Tis plain and obvious Henriquez would not, durst not, thus infringe the law of friendship, thus provoke a man that bears a sword and wears his flag of youth as fresh as he. He durst not. Tis contrivance, gross daubing, twixt them both. Oh, but I am overheard. Going. Enters Julio, disguised. Stay, Leonora. Has this outward veil quite lost me to thy knowledge? Oh, my Julio! Oh, thy presence ends the stern debate of doubt and cures me of a thousand heart-sick fears sprung from thy absence, yet awakes a train of other sleeping terrors. Do you weep? No, Leonora. When I weep, it must be the substance of mine eye. Would I could weep, for then mine eye would drop upon my heart and swage the fire there. You are full possessed how things go here. First, welcome heartily. Welcome to the ending of my last good hour. Now summer bliss and gaudy days are gone. My lease and am's expired. Not so, Leonora. Yes, Julio, yes. An everlasting storm has come upon me which I can't bear out. I cannot stay much talk. We have lost leisure. And thus it is. Your absence hath given breeding to what my letter hath declared, and is this instant on the affecting. 
Hark the music. Flourish within. Is now on tuning, which must celebrate this business so discordant. Tell me, then, what you will do. I know not what. Advise me. I'll kill the traitor. Oh, take heed. His death betters our cause. No wit. No killing, Julio. My blood stands still, and all my faculties are by enchantment dulled. Your gracious powers, the guardians of sworn faith and suffering virtue, inspire prevention of this dreaded mischief. This moment is our own. Let's use it, love, and fly o' the instant from this house of woe. Alas, impossible. My steps are watched. There's no escape for me. You must stay, too. Would I stay and see thee ravished from my arms? I'll force thy passage. Were I not a sword? Ne'er on man's thy road better. If I suffer the traitor played his part, if I not do manhood and justice, honor, let me be deemed a tame, pale coward, whom the night owls hoop may turn the aspen leaf. Some man take this, give me a distaff for it. Patience, Julio, and trust to me. I have forethought the means to disappoint these nuptials. Hark again. Music within. These are the bells nor for us. See the lights move this way, Julio. Quick, beyond yon arras, and take thy secret stand. Dispute it not, I have my reasons. You anon shall know them. There you may mark the passage of the night. Yet more, I charge you by the dearest ties. Whate'er you see or hear, whate'er shall hap in your concealment, rest a silent statue. Nay, hide thee straight, or see, I am armed, and vow. Shows a dagger. To fall a bleeding sacrifice before thee. Thrusts him out to the arras. I dare not tell thee of my purpose, Julio, lest it should wrap thee in such agonies which my love could not look on. Scene opens to a large hall, an altar prepared with tapers. Enter at one door servants with lights, Henriques, Don Bernard, and churchmen. At another, attendants to Leonora. Henriques runs to her. Why, Leonora, wilt thou with this gloom darken my triumph, suffering discontent, and van displeasure to subdue that sheik where love should sit enthroned? Behold your slave, nay, frown not, for each hour of growing time shall task me to thy service, till by merit of dearest love I blot the low-born Julio from thy fair mind. So I shall make it foul. This counsel is corrupt. Come, will you change? Why would you make a wife of such a one that is so apt to change? This foul proceeding still speaks against itself and vilifies the purest of your judgment. For your birth's sake I will not dart my hoarded curses at you, nor give my meanings language. For the love of all good things together, yet take heed and spurn the tempter back. I think you're mad, perverse and foolish wretch. How may I be obedient and wife too? Of my obedience, sir, I cannot strip me. Nor can I then be wife, grace against grace. Ungracious if I not obey a father, most perjured if I do. Yet, Lord, consider, or ere too late, or ere that not be tied which may with violence damnable be broken, no other way dissevered. Yet consider. You wed my body, not my heart, my lord, no part of my affection. Sounds it well that Julio's love is Lord Henrique's wife? Have you an ear for this harsh sound? No shot of reason can come near the place where my love's fortified. The day shall come wherein you'll chide this backwardness and bless our fervour in this course. No, no, Henrique's. When you shall find what profit you approved, your prophecy no more. Have done this talking. If you will cleave to your obedience, do it. If not, unbolt the portal and be gone. My blessings stay behind you. Sir, your pardon. I will not swerve a hair's breadth from my duty. It shall first cost me dear. Well, then, to the point. Give me your hand. My honoured lord, receive my daughter of me. Nay, no dragging back, but with my curses, whom I frankly give you, and with you, joy and honour. As Don Bernard goes to give Leonora to Henriques, 
Julio advances from the arras and steps between. Hold, Don Bernard. Mine is the elder claim. What are you, sir? A wretch that's almost lost to his own knowledge, struck throw with injuries. Ha! Julio, hear you, were you not sent on our command to court? Ordered to wait your fair dismission thence? And have you dared, knowing you are our vassal, to steal away unprivileged, and leave my business and your duty unaccomplished? Ungenerous lord, the circumstance of things should stop the tongue of question. You have wronged me, wronged me so basely and so dear a point, as stains the cheek of honour with a blush, cancels the bond of servants, bids allegiance throw to the wind all high respects of birth, title, and eminence, and in their stead fills up the painting heart with just defiance. If you have sense of shame, justice, Lord, forgo this bad intent, or with your sword answer me like a man, and I shall thank you. Julio, once dead, Leonora may be thine, but living she's a prize too rich to part with. Vain man, the present hour is fraught with business, a richer moment. Love shall first be served. Then, if your courage hold to claim it of me, I may have leisure to chastise this boldness. Nay, then I'll seize my right. What? Here a brawl? My servants, turn this boisterous sword aforth, and see he come not to disturb our joys. Hold, dogs! Leonora, coward base Henriquez! Julio is seized and dragged out by the servants. She dies upon me. Help! Leonora swoons. As they endeavour to recover her, a paper drops from her. Throng not about her! But give her air. What paper that? Let's see it. It is her own handwriting. Bow her head. Tis but her fright. She will recover soon. What learn you by that paper, good my lord? That she would do the violence to herself, which nature hath anticipated on her. What dagger means she? Search her well, I pray you. Here is the dagger. Oh, the stubborn sex, rash even to madness. Bear her to the chamber. Life flows in her again. Pray, bear her hence, and tend her, as you would the world's best treasure. Women carry Leonora off. Don Bernard, this wild tumult will soon cease, the course removed, and all return to calmness. Passions in woman are as short in working, as strong in their effect. Let the priest wait. Come, go we in. My soul is all on fire and burns impatient of this forced delay. Exeunt, and the scene closes. Scene 3. Prospect of a village at a distance. Enters Roderick. Julio's departure thus in secret from me, with the long doubtful absence of my brother, who cannot suffer but my father feels it, have trusted me with strong suspicions and dreams that will not let me sleep nor eat nor taste those recreations health demands but like a whirlwind hither have they snatched me perforce to be resolved i know my brother had julio's father for his host from him inquiry may befriend me enters camillo old sir i'm glad to have met you thus what ails the man camillo huh is't possible you should forget your friends? Friends? What are those? Why, those that love you, sir. You're none of those, sure, if you be Lord Roderick. Yes, I am that Lord Roderick, and I lie not. If I protest, I love you passing well. You loved my son too passing well, I take it. One that believed too suddenly in his court creed. All is not well. Good old man, do not rail. My lord, my lord, you've dealt dishonourably. Good sir, I am so far from doing wrongs of that base strain, I understand you not. Indeed. You know not neither of my conscience how your most virtuous brother, noble Enriquez, you look so like him, lord, you are the worse for it, rots upon such dissemblers. Under colour of buying coursers, and I know not what, bought my poor boy out of possession even of his plighted faith. Was not this honour? And this a constant friend? I dare not say so. Now you have robbed him of his love. Take all. Make up your malice and dispatch his life, too. If you would hear me, sir. Your brave old father would have been torn in pieces with wild horses ere he had done this treachery. 
On my conscience, had he but dreamt you two durst have committed this base, unmanly crime. Why, this is madness. I've done, I've eased my heart. Now you may talk. Then, as I am a gentleman, believe me, for I will lie for no man, I'm so far from being guilty of the least suspicion of sin that way, that fearing the long absence of Julio and my brother might beget something to start at, hither have I travelled to know the truth of you. Enters Violante behind. My servant loiters. Sure he means me well. Camillo, and a stranger, these may give me some comfort from their talk. I'll step aside and hear what fame is stirring. Violante retires. Why this wondering? Can there be one so near in blood as you are to that Enriquez and an honest man? While he was good, I do confess my nearness. But since his fall from honour, he's to me as a strange face I saw but yesterday and as soon lost. I ask your pardon, Lord. I was too rash and bold. No harm done, sir. But is it possible you should not hear the passage twixt Leonora and your brother? None of all this. Enters citizen. How now? I bear you time, sir, which I could wish some other tongue delivered. Whence, I pray you? From your son, sir. Prithee, where is he? That's more than I know now, sir, but this I can assure you, he is set to see raging mad, heaven covered him. He came to that cursed marriage, defiance take it. Prithee be gone, and bid the bell knoll for me. I have had one foot in the grave some time. Nay, go, good friend, thy news deserves no thanks. Exit, citizen. How does your lordship? That's well said, old man. I hope all shall be well yet. It had need, for tis a crooked world. Farewell, poor boy. Enters Don Bernard. This comes of forcing women where they hate. It was my own sin, and I am rewarded. Now I am like an aged oak, alone, left for all tempests. I would cry, but cannot. I am dried to death almost with these vexations. Lord, what a heavy load I have within me. My heart, my heart, my heart. Has this ill weather met with thee, too? Oh, wench, that I were with thee. You do not come to mock at me now. Ha! Huh? Do not dissemble. Thou mayest find a knave as bad as thou art to undo thee, too. I hope to see that day before I die yet. It needeth not, Camillo. I am knave sufficient to myself. If thou wilt rail, do it as bitterly as thou canst think of, for I deserve it. Draw thy sword and strike me, and I will thank thee for it. I've lost my daughter. She's stolen away, and whither gone I know not. She has a fair blessing in being from you, sir. I was too poor a brother for your greatness. You must be grafted into noble stocks and have your titles raised. My state was laughed at, and my alliance scorned. I've lost a son, too, which must not be put up so. Offers to draw. Hold, be counselled. You've equal losses. Urge no farther anger. Heaven, pleased now at your love, may bring again, and no doubt will, your children to your comforts, in which adventure my foot shall be foremost, and one more will I add, my honoured father, who has a son to grieve for too, though tainted, let your joint sorrow be as balm to heal these wounds of adverse fortune. Come, Camillo, do not deny your love, for charity I ask it of you. Let this noble lord make brothers of us, whom our own cross fates could never join. What I have been, forget. What I intend to be, believe and nourish. I do confess my wrongs. Give me your hand. Heaven make thee honest. There. Tis done like good men. Now there rests naught but that we part, and each take several ways in quest of our lost friends. Some of my train o'er the wild rocks shall wait you. Our best search ended, here we'll meet again, and tell the fortunes of our separate travels. Exeunt. Violante comes forward. 
I would your brother had but half your virtue. Yet there remains a little spark of hope that lights me to some comfort. The match is crossed, the parties separate, and I again may come to see the man that has betrayed me and wound his conscience for it. Home again I will not go, whatever fortune guides me, though every step I went I trod dangers as fearful and as pale as death. No, no, Henriquez, I will follow thee where there is day. Time may beget a wonder. Enters servant. Oh, are you come? What news? None but the worst. Your father makes mighty offers yonder by a crier to any one can bring you home again. Art thou corrupted? No. Wilt thou be honest? I hope you do not fear me. Indeed I do not. Thou hast an honest face, and such a face when it deceives, take heed, is cursed of all heaven's creatures. I'll hang first. Heaven bless thee from that end. I've heard a man say more than this, and yet that man was false. Thou'lt not be so, I hope. By my life, mistress. Swear not, I credit thee. But prithee, though, take heed thou dost not fail. I do not doubt thee, yet I have trusted such a serious face and been abused too. If I fail your trust... I do thee wrong to hold thy honesty at distance thus. Thou shalt know all my fortunes. Get me a shepherd's habit. Well, what else? And wait me in the evening where I told thee. There thou shalt know my farther ends. Take heed. Do you fear me still? No, tis only counsel. My life and death I have put equally into thy hand. Let not rewards nor hopes be cast into the scale to turn thy faith. Be honest but for virtue's sake, that's all. He that has such a treasure cannot fall. Exeunt. End of Act 3《Act Four of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One. Scene A wide plain with a prospect of mountains at a distance. Enter Master of the Flocks, three or four shepherds, and Violante in boy's clothes. Well, he's as sweet a man, heaven comfort him, as ever these eyes looked on. If he have a mother, I believe, neighbours, she's a woe woman for him at this hour. Why should he haunt these wild, unpeopled mountains, where nothing dwells but hunger and sharp winds? His melancholy, sir, that's the main devil, does it? Go to, I fear he has had too much foul play offered him. How gets he meat? Why, now and then he takes our victuals from us, though we desire him to eat, and instead of a short grace, beats us well and soundly, and then falls to. Where lies he? Even where the night overtakes him. Now will I be hanged, and some fair-snouted skittish woman or other be not at the end of his madness. Well, if he lodged within the sound of us, I knew our music would allure him. How attentively he stood, and how he fixed his eyes when your boy sung his love ditty. Oh, here he comes again. Let him alone. He wonders strangely at us. Not a word, sirs, to cross him, as you love your shoulders. He seems much disturbed. I believe the mad fit is upon him. Enters Julio. Horsemanship, hell, riding shall be abolished. Turn the barbed steed loose to his native wildness. It is a beast too noble to be made the property of man's baseness. What a letter wrote he to his brother. What a man was I. Why, Perseus did not know his seat like me. The Parthian that rides swift without the rein match not my grace and firmness. Shall this lord die when men pray for him? Think you tis meet? I don't know what to say. Neither I, nor all the confessors in Spain, can unriddle this wild stuff. I must, to court, be ushered into grace by a large list of praises, ready penned. O oh, devil, 
What a venomous world is this when commendations are the baits to ruin. All these good words were gyves and fetters, sir, to keep me bolted there, while false sender played out the game of treachery. Hold, come hither. You have an aspect, sir, of wondrous wisdom, and, as it seems, are travelled deep in knowledge. Have you ever seen the phoenix of the earth, the bird of paradise? In troth, not I, sir. I have, and known her haunts, and where she builds her spicy nest. Tis like a credulous fool, I showed the treasure to a friend in trust, and he hath robbed me of her. Trust no friend, keep thy heart's counsel close. Hast thou a mistress? Give her not out in words nor let thy pride be wanton to display her charms to view. Love is contagious, and a breath of praise, or a slight glance has kindled up its flame, and turned a friend to traitor. Tis in proof, and it has hurt my brain. Mary, now there is some moral in his madness, and we may profit by it. See, he grows cool and pensive. Go towards him, boy, but do not look that way. Alas, I tremble. O oh, my pretty youth, come hither, child. Did not your song imply something of love? Ha! Ha! Goes it there? Now, if the boy be witty, we shall trace something. Yes, sir, it was the subject. Sit here, then. Come, shake not, good pretty soul, nor do not fear me. I'll not do thee wrong. Why do you look so on me? I have reasons. It puzzles my philosophy to think that the rude blast hot sun and dashing rains have made no fiercer war upon thy youth nor hurt the bloom of that vermilion cheek you weep too do you not sometimes i do i weep sometimes too you're extremely young indeed i've seen more sorrow far than years yet all these have not broken your complexion you have a strong heart and you are the happier i warrant you're a very loving woman a woman sir aside I fear has found me out. He takes the boy for a woman, mad again. You've met some disappointment. Some foul play has crossed your love. I read it in your face. You read a truth, then. Where can lie the fault? Is it in the man or some dissembling knave he put in trust? Ho! Oh, have I hit the cause? You're not far off. This world is full of cousiners very full. Young virgins must be wary in their ways. I've known a duke's son do as great a knavery. Will you be ruled by me? Yes. Kill yourself. T'will be a terror to the villain's conscience the longest day he lives. By no means! What? Commit self-murder! Yes, I'll have it so. I fear his fit is returning. Take heed of all hands. Sir, do you want anything? Thou liest. Thou canst not hurt me. I am proof gainst farther wrongs. Steal close behind me, lady. I will avenge thee. Thank the heavens I'm free. O oh, treacherous base Enriquez, have I caught thee? Help! Help, good neighbours! He will kill me else! Julio seizes on the shepherd. Violante runs out. Here thou shalt pay the heart blood for the wrongs thou heaped upon this head. Faith breaker! Villain! I'll suck thy life blood. Good sir, have patience. This is no Henriquez. They rescue the shepherd. Well, let him slink to court and hide a coward. Not all his father's guard shall shield him there. Or if he prove too strong for mortal arm, I will solicit every saint in heaven to lend me vengeance. All about it straight. The wrathful element shall wage this war. Fury shall haunt him. Vultures gnaw his heart. A nature pour forth all her stores of plagues to join in punishment of truth betrayed. Exit Julio. Go thy ways, and a vengeance go with thee. Pray feel my nose. Is it fast, neighbours? Tis as well as may be. He pulled at it as he would have dragged a bullock backward by the tail. And it had been some men's nose that I know, neighbours. Who knows where it had been now? He has given me such a devilish dash o'er the mouth that I feel I shall never whistle to my sheep again. Then they'll make holy day. Come, shall we go? For, I fear, if the youth returns, our second course will be much more against our stomachs. Walk you afore. I will give my boy some short instructions, and I'll follow straight. We'll crush a cup together. Pray, do not linger. I will not, sirs. 
this must not be a boy his voice mane gesture everything he does savors of soft and female delicacy he but puts on this seeming and his garb speaks him of such a rank as well persuades me he plays the swain rather to cloak some purpose than forced to it by a need i've waited long to mark the end he has in his disguise but am not perfect in it the madman's coil has driven him shaking hence these fears betray him if he prove right i'm happy oh he's here enters violante come hither boy where did you leave the flock child grazing below sir what does he mean to stroke one on the cheek so i hope i'm not betrayed have you learnt the whistle yet and when to fold and how to make the dog bring in the strayers time sir will furnish me with all these rules my will is able but my knowledge weak sir that's a good child why dost thou blush my boy aside tis certainly a woman speak my boy heaven how i tremble tis unusual to me to find such kindness at a master's hand that i am a poor boy every way unable unless it be in prayers to merit it besides i have often heard old people say too much indulgence makes boys rude and saucy are you so cunning aside how his eyes shake fire and measure every piece of youth about me the ewes want water sir shall i go drive him down to the cistern shall i make haste sir aside would i were five miles from him how he gripes me come come all this is not sufficient child to make a fool of me this is a fine hand a delicate fine hand never changes color you understand me and a woman's hand you're strangely out yet if i were a woman i know you are so honest and so good that though i wore disguises for some ends you would not wrong me come you're made for love will you comply i matter with all this talk there's nothing you can say can take my edge off oh do but quench these foul affections in you that like base thieves have robbed you of your reason and i will be a woman and begins so sad a story that if there be aught of humane in you or a soul that's gentle you cannot choose but pity my lost youth no stories now kill me directly sir as you have any goodness take my life ah uh, shepherd will you hear sir what bawling rogue is that with the devil's name blessings upon him whatsoe'er he be runs out enters roderick good even my friend i thought you had all been asleep in this country you had lied then for you were waking when you thought so i thank you sir i pray be covered tis not so much worth sir was that thy boy ran crying yes what then why dost thou beat him so to make him grow a pretty medicine thou canst not tell me the way to the next nunnery how do you know that yes i can tell you but the question is whether i will or no and indeed i will not fare you well exit master what a brute fellow's this are they all thus my brother henriquez tells me by his letters the mistress of his soul not far from hence hath taken sanctuary from which he prays my aid to bring her back from what camillo hinted i wear some doubts here tis appointed that we should meet it must be here tis so he comes enters henriquez now brother what's this post-haste business you hurry me about some wenching matter my letter told you sir tis true it tells me that you've lost a mistress whom your heart bleeds for but the means to win her from her close life i take it is not mentioned you're ever in these troubles noble brother i own i have too freely given scope to youth's intemperate heat and rash desires 
but think not that I would engage your virtues to any course wherein my constant heart attended not my eye, till now my passions reigned in my blood, ne'er peace it pierce into my mind, but I am a convent grown to purest thoughts, and must in anguish spend my days to come, if I possess not her, so much I love. The means? She's in a cloister, is she not? Within whose walls to enter as we are will never be. Few men but friars come there, which we shall never make. If that would do it, I would make anything. Are you so hot? Aside. I'll serve him, be it but to save his honour. To feign a corpse, by the mass it shall be so. We must pretend we do transport a body, as twere to his funeral, and coming late by, crave a night's leave to rest the hearse in a convent. That be our course, for to such charity strict zeal and custom of the house give way. And opportune a vacant hearse passed by, from rites but new performed. This for a price will hire, to put our scheme in act. Ho! Oh, Gerald! Enter Gerald, to whom Henriquez whispers. Then Gerald goes out. When we're once lodged, the means of her conveyance by safe and secret force with ease will compass. But, brother, know my terms. If that your mistress will to the world come back, and she appear an object worthy in our father's eye, woo her and win her. But if his consent keep not pace with your purpose, doubt it not, have looked not with a common eye, but chose a noble virgin who to make her so, has all the gifts of heaven and earth upon her. If ever woman yet could be an angel, she is the nearest. Well, a lover's praise feasts not a common ear. Now to our plot, we shall bring night in with us. Exeunt. Scene two. Enter Julio and two gentlemen. Good sir, compose yourself. O oh, Leonora, that heaven had made thee stronger than a woman, how happy had I been! He's come again. I'll take this interval to work upon him. These wild and solitary prisons, sir, but feed your pain. Let bear reason guide you, and quit this forlorn state that yields no comfort. Lute sounds within. Ha! Hark a sound from heaven. Do you hear nothing? Yes, sir. The touch of some sweet instrument is there no inevitant. No, no. The better. This is a strange place to hear music in. I'm often visited with these sweet airs, the spirit of some hapless man that died and left his love hidden a faithless woman, sure haunts these mountains. Violante sings within. Fond echo, forego thy light strain, and heedfully hear a lost maid. Go, tell the false ear of the swain how deeply his vows have betrayed. Go, tell him what sorrows I bear. See yet if his heart feel my woe. Tis now he must heal my despair, or death will make pity too slow. See how his soul strives in him. This has strained as searched him to the heart. Excellent sorrow. You never loved? No. Peace, and learn to grieve, then. Go, tell him what sorrows I bear. See yet if his heart feels my woe. Tis now he must heal my despair, or death will make pity too slow. Is this not heavenly? I never heard the like, sir. I'll tell you, my good friend, but pray say nothing. I'm strangely touched with this. The heavenly sound diffuses a sweet peace through all my soul, but yet I wonder what new, sad companion grief has brought hither to outbid my sorrows. Stand off, stand off, stand off. Friends, it appears. Enters Violante. How much more grateful are these craggy mountains, and these wild trees than things of nobler natures. For these receive my plaints, and mourn again in many echoes to me. All good people are fallen asleep forever. None are left that have the sense and touch of tenderness for virtue's sake. No, scarce their memory from whom I may expect counsel and fears, ease to complainings or redress of wrongs this is a moving sorrow but say nothing what dangers have i run 
and to what insults exposed this ruin of myself oh mischief on that soul-spotted hind my vicious master who would have thought that such poor worms as they whose best feed is coarse bread whose beverage water should have so much rank blood i shake all over and blush to think what had become of me if that good man had not relieved me from him since she is not leonora she is heavenly when she speaks next listen as seriously as women do that have their loves at sea what wind blows every morning i cannot get this false man's memory out of my mind yon maidens that shall live to hear my mournful tale when i am ashes be wise and to an oath give no more credit to tears to vows false both or anything a man shall promise than to the clouds that now bear such a pleasing shape and now are nothing for they will cousin if they may be cousined the very gods they worship valour justice discretion honesty and all they covet to make them seeming saints are but the wiles by which these sirens lure us to destruction do not you weep now i could drop myself into a fountain for her she weeps extremely let her weep tis well her heart will break else great sorrows live in tears oh false henriquez ha and o oh, thou fool forsaken violante whose belief and childish love have made thee so go die for there is nothing left thee now to look for that can bring comfort but a quiet grave there all the miseries i long have felt and those to come shall sweetly sleep together fortune may guide that false henriquez hither to weep repentance o'er my pale dead course and cheer my wandering spirit with these loved obsequies Going. Stay, lady, stay. Can it be possible that you are Violante? That lost name, spoken by one that needs must know my fortunes, has taken much fear from me. Who are you, sir? For sure I am that hopeless Violante. And I, as far from any earthly comfort that I know yet, the much wronged Julio. Julio! I once thought so, if the cursed Enriquez had power to change you to a boy. Why, lady should not that mischief make me anything that have an equal share in all the miseries his crime hath flung upon us well i know it and pardon me i could not know your virtues before your griefs methought when last we met the accent of your voice struck in my ear like something i had known but floods of sorrow drowned the remembrance if you'll please to sit since i have found a suffering true companion and give me hearing I will tell you something of Leonora that may comfort you. Blessing upon thee. Henceforth I protest never to leave thee, if heaven say amen. But soft, let's shift our ground, guide our sad steps to some remoter gloom, where undisturbed we may compare our woes. Dwell on the tale of mutual injuries till our eyes run o'er, and we infect each other with fresh sorrows. Talk to you of comfort? Tis the food of fools, and we will none own but indulge despair, so worn with grief, steal to the cave of death, and in a sigh give up our latest breath. Exeunt. End of Act Four. Act Five of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act 5, Scene 1. Scene. The prospect of the mountains continued. Enter Roderick, Leonora Vales, Henriquez, attendants as mourners. Rest certain, lady, nothing shall betide you but fair and noble usage. Pardon me that hitherto a course of violence has snatched you from that seat of contemplation to which you gave your afterlife. Where am I? Not in the nunnery. Never blush nor tremble. Your honour has as fair a guard as when within a cloister. Know then what is done, which I presume you understand not truly, 
has this use to preserve the life of one dying for love of you my brother and your friend under which colour we desired to rest our hearse one night within your hallowed walls where we surprised you are you that lord roderick so spoken of for virtue and fair life and dare you lose these to be advocate for such a brother such a sinful brother such an unfaithful treacherous brutal brother this is a fearful charge looks at henriquez if you would have me think you still bear respect for virtue's name as you would wish your daughters thus distressed might find a guard protect me from henriquez and i am happy come sir make your answer for as i have a soul i am ashamed on t o oh, leonora see thus self-condemned i throw me at your feet and sue for mercy if i have erred imputed to my love the tyrant god that bows us to his way rebellious to the laws of reasoning men that will not have his watery's action scanned but calls it justice when we must obey him he but commanded what your eyes inspired whose sacred beams darted into my soul have purged the mansion from impure desires and kindled in my heart a vestal's flame rise rise my lord this well-dissembled passion has gained you nothing but a deeper hate should i imagine he can truly love me that like a villain murthers my desires or should i drink that wine and think it cordial when i see poison in it draw this way lady i am not perfect in your story yet but see you've had some wrongs that want redress only you must have patience to go with us to yon small lodge which meets the sight from hence where your distress shall find the due respect till when your griefs shall govern me as much as nearness and affection to my brother call my attendants yours and use them freely for as i am a gentleman no power above your own will shall come near your person as they are going out violante enters and plucks roderick by the sleeve the rest go out your ear a moment scorn not my tender youth look to the lady there i follow straight what ails this boy why dost thou single me the due observances of your noble virtue vowed to this morning virgin makes me bold to give it more employment oh not thou the surly shepherd's boy that when i called to know the way ran crying by me yes sir and i thank heaven and you for helping me how did i help thee boy i do but seem so sir and am indeed a woman one your brother has once loved or heaven forgive him else he lied extremely weep not good maid oh this licentious brother but how came you a wanderer on these mountains that as we pass and it please you i'll discover i will assure you sir these barren mountains hold many wonders of your brother's making here wanders hapless julio worthy man besides himself with wrong that once again sir i said julio sleep weighed down his eyelids oppressed with watching just as you approached us oh brother we shall sound the depths of falsehood if this be true no more but guide me to him i hope a fair end will succeed all yet if it be he by your leave gentle brother i'll see him served first maid you have o'erjoyed me thou shalt have right to make thy fair appeal to the good duke and doubt not but thy tears shall be repaid with interest from his justice lead me to julio exeunt scene two an apartment in the lodge enter duke don bernard and camillo ay then your grace had had a son more he a daughter and i an heir but let it be as tis i cannot mend it one way or other i shall rub it over with rubbing to my grave and there's an end on't our sorrows cannot help us gentlemen hang me sir if i shed one tear more by jove i've wept so long i'm as blind as justice when i come to see my hawks which i held a toy next to my son if they be but house high i must stand aiming at them like a gunner why he mourns like a man don bernard you are still like april full of showers and dews and yet i blame you not for i myself 
feel the self-same affections. Let them go. They're disobedient children. Ay, my lord. Yet they may turn again. Let them have their swing. They're young and wanton. The next storm we shall have them gallop homeward, whining as pigs do in the wind. Would I had my daughter anyway? Wouldst thou have her with bairn, man? Tell me that. I care not if an honest father got it. You might have had her so in this good time, had my son had her. Now you may seek your fool to stop a gap with. You say that Roderick charged you here should wait him. He has overslipped the time at which his letters of speed request that I should also meet him. I fear some bad event is ushered in by this delay. How now? Enters gentleman. So please, your grace, what what week makes a poach? I thank thee, fellow, for thy timely news. Come see alone? No, sir, I tell it well, and in this train for us a hearse with all due rights of mine. Exit, gentlemen. Heaven send. Henricus, live? Tis my poor Julio. Enters Roderick, hastily. Oh, welcome, 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 good Roderick. Say what news. Do you bring joy or grief, my lord? For me, come what can come, I'll live a month or two of the gout, please. Curse my physician once more, and then under this stone lies seventy-one. Signor, you do express a manly patience. My noble father, something I have brought to ease your sorrows. My endeavours have not been altogether barren in my journey. It comes at need, boy, but I'd hope it from thee. Enter Leonora, veiled, Henriquez behind, and attendants. The company I bring will bear me witness the busiest of my time has been employed on this good task. Don Bernard finds beneath this veil his daughter. You, my royal father, behind that lady, a wandering son. How I met with them, and how brought them hither, more leisure must unfold. My father here, and Julio's, O oh, confusion! To the Duke. Lowest earth, I bow me for your pardon. Oh, my girl, thou bringest new life. Embraces Leonora to Roderick. And you, my son, restore me. O oh, comfort here that has been missing long. To Henriquez. I hope thy follies thou hast left abroad. Ay, ay, you've all comforts, but I, you have ruined me, killed my poor boy, cheated and ruined him, and I have no comfort. Be patient, signor. Time may guide my hand to work you comfort, too. I thank your lordship. Would grandsire time had been so kind to have done it, we might have joyed together like good fellows. But he's so full of business, good old man, tis wonder he could do the good he has done. Nay, child, be comforted. These tears distract me. Hear your good father, lady. Willingly. The voice of parents is the voice of gods. For to their children they are heaven's lieutenants, made fathers not for common uses merely, of procreation. Beasts and birds would be as noble then as we are, but to steer the wanton freight of youth through storms and dangers, which with full sails they bear upon, and strengthen that moral line of life they bend so often. For these are we made fathers, and for these may challenge duty on our children's part. Obedience is the sacrifice of angels, whose form you carry. Hear the duke, good wench. I do most heedfully. To the duke. My gracious lord, let me be so unmannered to request he would not farther press me with persuasions at the instant hour, but have the gentle patience to bury this keen suit till I shake hands with my old sorrows. Why dost look at me? Alas, I cannot help thee. And... But weep a farewell to my murdered Julio. Blessing be with thy soul, whene'er it leaves thee. For such sad rites must be performed, my lord, ere I can love again. Maids that have loved, if they be worth that noble testimony, wear their loves here, my lord, here in their hearts, deep, deep within. Not in their eyes or accents, such may be slipped away, or with two tears washed out of all remembrance. Mine no physic but time or death can cure. Aside. 
you make your own conditions and i seal them thus to your virtuous hand well wench thy equal shall not be found in haste i give thee that thou art a right one every inch my father for without doubt that snuff never begot thee was some choice fellow some true gentleman i give thy mother thanks for it there's no harm done would i were young again and had but thee a good horse under me and a good sword and thus much for inheritance violante offers once or twice to show herself but goes back what boy is that has offered twice or thrice to break upon us i've noted him and still he falls back fearful a little boy sir like a shepherd yes tis your page brother one that was so late my page what page e'en so he says your page and more and worse you stole him from his friends and promised him preferment ay preferment and on some slight occasion let him slip here on these mountains where he had been starved had not my people found him as we travelled this was not handsome brother you are merry you'll find it sober truth if so tis ill it's fiction all sir brother you must please to look some other fool to put these tricks on they are too obvious please your grace give leave to admit the boy if he knows me and say i stole him from his friends and cast him off know me no more brother pray do not wrong me enter his violante here is the boy if he deny this to you then i have wronged you hear me what's thy name boy florio and it like your grace a pretty child where wast thou born on the other side the mountain what are thy friends a father sir but poor how camest thou hither how to leave thy father pointing to henriques that noble gentleman pleased once to like me and not to lie so much to dote upon me that with his promises he won my youth and duty from my father him i followed how say you now brother ay my lord how say you as i have a life and soul tis all a trick sir i never saw the boy before oh sir call not your soul to witness in a wrong and tis not noble in you to despise what you have made thus if i lie let justice turn all her rods upon me fie henriquez there is no trace of cunning in this boy a good boy be not fearful speak thy mind child nature sure meant thou shouldst have been a wench and then it had been no marvel he had bobbed thee why did he put thee from him that to me is yet unknown sir for my faith he could not i never did deceive him for my service he had no just cause what my youth was able my will still put in act to please my master i cannot steal therefore that can be nothing to my undoing no nor lie my breeding though it be plain is honest weep not child this lord has abused men women and children already what farther plot he has the devil knows if thou canst bring a witness of thy wrong else it would be injustice to believe thee he having sworn against it thou shalt have i bind it with my honour satisfaction to thine own wishes i desire no more sir i have a witness and a noble one for truth and honesty go bring him hither exit violante tis lying boy will take him to his heels and leave me slandered no i'll be his voucher nay then tis plan this is confederacy that he has been an agent in your service appears from this here is a letter brother produced perforce to give him credit with me the writing yours the matter love for so he says he can explain it then be like a young he bawd this forgery confounds me read it roderick our prudence should now teach us to forget what our indiscretion has committed i have already made one step towards this wisdom halter aside my very word to violante go on my gracious father give me pardon i do confess i some such letter wrote the purport all too trivial for your ear but how it reached this young dissembler's hands is what i cannot solve for on my soul and by the honours of my birth and house the minion's face till now i never saw 
run not too far in debt on protestation. Why should you do a child this wrong? Go to, your friendship's past warrant not this abuse. If you provoke me thus, I shall forget what you are to me. This is a mere practice, and villainy to draw me into scandal. No more. You are a boy. Here comes a witness shall prove you so. No more. Enter Giulio, disguised. Violante as a woman. Another rascal. Hold. Seeing Violante. Ha! What's here? Aside. By all my sins, the injured Violante. Now, sir, whose practice breaks? To Henriquez. Is this a page? One that has done him service, and he has paid her for it, but broke his covenant. My lord, I come not now to wound your spirit. Your pure affection dead, which first betrayed me, my claim die with it. Only let me not shrink to the grave with infamy upon me. Protect my virtue, though it hurt your faith, and my last breath shall speak Henriquez noble. What a fierce conflict, shame and wounded honour. Race in my breast, but honour shall overcome. She looks as beauteous and as innocent as when I wronged her. Virtues violante. Too good for me, dare you still love a man, so faithless as I am. I know you love me. Thus, thus, and thus I print my vowed repentance. Let all men read it here. My gracious father, forgive and make me rich with your consent. This is my wife. No other would I choose were she a queen. Here's a new change. Bernard looks dull upon it. And fair Leonora, from whose virgin arms I forced my wronged friend Giulio, oh, forgive me, take home your holy vows, and let me have em that has to serve them. Oh, that he were here, that I might own the baseness of my wrong, and purpose to recompense. My Violante, you must again be widowed, for I vow a ceaseless pilgrimage, never to know joy, till I can give it to the injured Giulio. This almost melts me. But my poor lost boy. I'll stop that voyage, brother. Gentle lady, what think you of this honest man? Alas, my thoughts, my lord, were all employed within. He has a face makes me remember something I have thought well of. How he looks upon me. Poor man, he weeps. <sighs> Stay. It, it cannot be. He has his eye, his features, shape, and gesture. What? He would speak. Leonora. Throws off his disguise. <gasps> yes, tis he. Oh, ecstasy of joy. They embrace. Now what's the matter? Let him alone. They're almost starved for kisses. Stand forty foot off. No man trouble him. Much good may it do your hearts. What is he, Lord? What is he? A certain son of yours. The devil he is. If he be the devil, that devil must call you father. By your leave a little. Ho! Are you my Julio? My duty tells me so, sir, still on my knees. But love engrossed me all. O oh, Leonora, do I once more hold thee? Nay, to it again. I will not hinder you a kiss. Tis he. Leaps. The righteous powers at length have crowned our loves. Think, Julio, from the storm that's now o'erblown, though sour affliction combat hope awhile, when lovers swear true faith, the listening angels stand on the golden battlements of heaven and waft their vows to the eternal throne. Such were our vows, and so are they repaid. Even as you are, we'll join your hands together. A providence above our powers rules all. To Henriquez. Ask him forgiveness, boy. He has it, sir. The fault was love's, not his. Brave, generous Julio, I knew thy nobleness of old, and prized it, till passion made me blind, once more, my friend, share in a heart that never shall wrong thee more, and brother. This embrace cuts off excuses. I must, in part. Repair my son's offence. At your best leisure, Julio, know our court. And Violante, for I know you now, I have a debt to pay. Your good old father, once, when I chased the boar, preserved my life. 
for that good deed and for your virtue's sake though your descent be low call me your father a match drawn out of honesty and goodness is pedigree enough gives her to henriquez are you all pleased all all sir all sir all and i not least will now return to court and that short travel and your loves completed shall as i trust for life restrain these wanderings there the solemnity and grace i'll do your several nuptials shall approve my joy and make grieved lovers that your story read with true love's wanderings may like yours succeed curtain falls end of act five epilogue written by a friend well heaven defend us from these ancient plays these moral bards of good queen bess's days they write from virtue's laws and think no further but draw a rape as dreadful as a murder you modern wits more deeply versed in nature can tip the wink to tell us you know better as who should say there's no such killing matter we've heard old stories told and yet ne'er wondered of many a prude that has endured a hundred and violante grieves or we're mistaken not because ravished but because forsaken had this been written to the modern stage her menace had been copied from the age then though she had been once a little wrong she still had had the grace to hold her tongue and after all with downcast looks been led like any virgin to the bridal bed there if the good man questioned her misdoing she'd stop him short pray who made you so knowing what doubt my virtue what's your base intention sir that's a point above your comprehension well heaven be praised the virtue of our times secures us from our gothic grandsire's crimes rapes magic new opinions which before have filled our chronicles are now no more and this reforming age may justly boast that dreadful sin polygamy is lost so far from multiplying wives tis known our husbands find they've work enough with one then as for rapes those dangerous days are past our depper sparks are seldom in such haste in shakespeare's age the english youth inspired loved as they fought by him and beauty fired tis yours to crown the bard whose magic strain could charm the heroes of that glorious reign which humbled to the dust the pride of spain End of Double Falsehood or The Distressed Lovers by Louis Theobald